For the last two years of my life, all I have heard is, where's the podcast, Nicole? Where's the podcast? Maybe you should come out with the podcast. I have a podcast. It's now up. It's the last video that's posted on my channel. It's called Talk Nasty to Me. It's on Spotify and other streaming platforms. And if you don't listen, David Dobrik and I are going to come get you. Before I get this video started, I need to say a few things, okay? Number one, everything I'm about to say is alleged. Allegedly. Allegedly to all of this. There is nothing in here that is not alleged, okay? Everything in this video is supposedly. It is potentially supposedly. It is potentially, definitely, allegedly, supposedly. Additionally, everything that I'm about to talk about in this video all happened in Minecraft. Not real life. None of it happened in the present day world, the universe in which we are living today. It all happened in Minecraft, okay? Also, this video is not an opinion piece, nor is it an official source. I'm but a girl, okay? I do research online with the internet that I'm provided, internet.com. I have opinions, I because it's natural, I'm human. I, like I said, I am but a girl. And additionally, I could definitely be wrong about things. That's a lie, I am a girl. Okay, I'm so happy that we all got that out of the way. After my latest Frenemies video, I realized that everyone has perceived me as this huge, massive Trisha Paytas fan, which is very shocking and appalling to me considering that everyone in my personal life knows that I have consumed so much H3 the last few months that they all tell me they liked me better before I watched H3 and they missed the old Nicole. I completely understand. I'm not gonna be perceived on the internet the way that I want to be all of the time. This video is for my personal enjoyment to explain to my friends and family who may not understand the lore in which I know too much about, and it's also to make my mother proud that I got a degree in media studies and production, which I am doing both. I am studying the media and I am producing it. One last final thing. I just wanted to give a big thank you to Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video. As some of you may know, my car got stolen earlier this year, so I had to purchase a new car. <laughs> and normally, having to do huge expenses like that gives me a whole lot of stress. But Rocket Money is an all-in-one personal finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. I have personally been using Rocket Money over the last few years. One of my favorite features about them is that you can cancel unwanted subscriptions. Rocket Money safely and securely identifies recurring charges and cancels unwanted subscriptions for you with just a tap. I had subscriptions that I didn't even know that I was paying for monthly. So I have saved a significant amount of money by literally just being able to cancel these unwanted subscriptions through Rocket Money. And you can also set up budgets within Rocket Money. You can set budgets that automatically monitor your spending by category, get friendly notifications when you exceeded them, and visualize your spend to earn ratio by month, quarter, or year. Just go to rocketmoney.com slash Nicole Raffi or click the link in the description. This is like my dream sponsorship because like I said, I have been using Rocket Money for years. So anyway, I highly recommend. Thank you so much, Rocket Money. Let's cut to the chase. I was a massive David Dobrik fan, massive. One might say I had a small crush on him at one point or another. It was literally just because he made that perfume commercial. And I think that anybody who would have watched that perfume commercial at the time, not knowing that he like potentially almost killed one of his friends, like you too would have fell for it, okay? We're not immune. I am but a girl. There are certain parts of David's history and lore that I won't touch on as strongly because I really want to dedicate this video mainly to the downfall of the vlog squad, what happened to everyone, and additionally, what happened between David Dobrik and Jeff Wittick. Not to say at all that what happened to Jeff Wittick is not traumatic, it's extremely traumatic, but there are some things that are very traumatic and um, vile to even talk about. However, there are people directly straight from the source, additionally journalists, who do a way better job at telling the story of this vile human being better than I ever could. So if it feels like I'm skimping out on something, maybe use critical thinking skills and maybe think why. Who the hell is David Dobrik? David Dobrik is a 27 year old YouTuber, former YouTuber, current Snapchatter, Mm, sorry, Trisha just came out of me. Full-time Snapchatter who was born in Slovakia. I felt very close and related to him because I was like, oh my God, two Eastern European people. Hello, I can relate. Anyway, wrong, he's excommunicated from my village. He moved to Chicago when he was young and then moved to LA to pursue YouTubing full-time after doing pretty well on Vine. All of his videos were four minutes and 20 seconds long and mainly are really only involved the vlog squad. Who the hell is the vlog squad? Here's my little photo of the vlog squad. It looks like they're in a Vineyards Vine ad. The vlog squad is like ever changing, okay? There's different variations to it. There's different people that were excommunicated, kind of like how David Dobrik was excommunicated from my little Polish village. There are people who have been excommunicated, people who have been added, people who have been swapped out. So in the beginning, David's videos mainly featured his girlfriend, Liza Koshi. He's a very big YouTuber who now is more so like a mainstream media star. They broke up. That was a very popular video on YouTube at the time when they broke up. So these videos 
videos were all on David Dobrik's channel and he would also have people like Gabby Hanna, Alex Ernst, Big Nick. Eventually the crowd changed, it evolved. And as it kind of grew bigger and he grew bigger, it also started to feature like some celebrities. So sometimes Justin Bieber was featured in his videos. Sometimes Kylie Jenner's friends like Stassi would be included in the vlog squad and would be at these hangouts. The bigger they got, the more networking, the more connections they got. However, the core group of people who mainly people recognize as like the OG vlog squad is Toddy Smith, David Dobrik, Zayn Hajazi, Aaron Gilfoy, Carly Encontro, Natalie Marduena, Jeff Wittick, Scotty Sire, Jason Nash, and Dirty Dom. Now this, this is Jeff Wittick, okay? Jeff Wittick is a 31-year-old celebrity barber. He's a YouTuber, a model, an actor, a beautiful man. He had this show on YouTube called Jeff's Barber Shop where he would invite celebrity guests, YouTubers, influencers on and cut their hair. And honestly, it was very entertaining. He grew up in Staten Island and then later moved to LA. This man has literally lived like a billion different lives. Like this is just like the weirdest path that he's gone down is going the vlog squad route, to be honest. He was in two episodes of the Jersey Shore, the Bad Girls Club. He was Amber Rose's barber. He also cut Mac Miller's hair. And his most interesting characteristic, according to David Dobrik, was that he went to prison. Back in 2011, Jeff Wittick was booked for dealing and possession of drugs. David liked to describe his videos kind of like a sitcom, but what he kind of did to some of the people within the vlog squad group is kind of make them out to be like caricatures. So he would take one characteristic of them and kind of blow it out of proportion and make it like their whole persona. So quickly, Jeff was known as the ex-convict of the group. That was his most interesting feature about him, even though he really wasn't in prison for even that long. Anyway, Jeff started recording with David Do Dobrik sometime in 2018 because their friend Toddy Smith, pictured here, Jeff and Toddy were friends, Toddy and David were friends, Toddy introduced, that's a stupid fucking name, sorry if your name is Toddy, but like, you're like 35 and you're mean, just go by Todd. Toddy introduced Jeff Wittick to David Dobrik. So before we get into what happened between Jeff and David, I think it's important to understand some of the allegations that are against David Dobrik and the vlog squad, okay? And some of which Jeff Wittick himself tried to protect and cover for David. Now, a lot of this actually came to light early on in the pandemic when David Dobrik was not filming anymore. David Dobrik would religiously film, I believe he was making like three videos a week at one point, and then it kind of went down to two, and then it kind of went down to one. And then when the pandemic happened, he's like, I'm just gonna take a break. One of David Dobrik's closest friends was Dom Zaglitis, is a menace of a person and has multiple allegations against him. In one of the videos that David Dobrik filmed, Dom is accused of rape a college girl who said that she was too drunk to give consent. This was recorded and made into a video on David's channel and kept up for years. There's also rumors that certain members of the vlog squad provided alcohol for some of these girls as they were under the age of 21. Jeff Wittick was one of those accused actually by Trisha Paytas, who is a reoccurring guest. You may ask, why didn't you just use the last photo that you had of Trisha Paytas in your last video? Because that's definitely stored under my bed. Trisha Paytas has many very good looks and I feel like it'd be a disservice to her to just use one of her looks for every single video that she is involved in. And I really like this one. And it's probably offensive, so I'll probably delete this video later. Trisha Paytas was actually in the vlog squad for a certain period of time because she was dating Jason Nash. Jason Nash is also in the vlog squad. I believe he's 50 now. And his like caricature persona and stuff was that he was like the old fart in the group. So Trisha was actually there that night that these allegations have happened. And Trisha has actually accused Jeff Wittick of providing alcohol to these underage girls, which Jeff Wittick adamantly denies. His defense is that he doesn't buy alcohol because he has been sober for years. This was heavily covered on the Frenemies podcast. And thus we got the iconic line that is Jeff Wittick saying, okay, Ethan. Okay, Ethan. Um, Additionally, in this time, an old Vlog Squad member named Seth Francois came forth and talked about his experience in the Vlog Squad where David had convinced him and lured him into a prank where he was told he was going to be kissing Corinna Kampf. Corinna's not here. He was told he was going to be kissing Corinna Kampf in this video when it was actually Jason Nash in costume. Seth Francois said that ultimately what had happened was he was forced into doing something and kissing someone that he did not give consent to. Which then a lot of the Vlog Squad members were in defense of David Dobrik and were like, Seth, you're full of shit. 
Like, you definitely gave consent. You knew what was gonna happen. You knew what happens in David's videos. Don't call it sharing your truth if you're sharing a lie. Seth accused David and Jason of sex assault for a kissing prank that was done in 2017, which is so fucked up because he was part of the videos. He knows what we do. The internet was not happy with this for obvious reasons, because that's just fucked up. <laughs> Seth Francois is a victim. Trisha Paytas on Frenemies pretty frequently said that David Dobrik is a bad man and that he is shitty. And everyone didn't really believe her at the time. They're like, what? He's a great guy. She claims that David Dobrik hid in the room while she was having sex with her boyfriend, Jason Nash. David filmed her naked without Trisha's consent and Jason Nash was aware of the prank. However, Paytas claims there was no consent given. I was a participant in the vlogs. That's my consent. She also asked David Dobrik to not post the video titled, I snuck into their hotel room Surprise. The video had over 14 million views. Trisha Paytas alleges that David Dobrik forced Jason Nash to break up with Trisha, that she was causing too much drama and they secretly saw each other for a while without David knowing because they had to like sneak behind the boss's back and everything. Jason Nash alleges that on Trisha Paytas's birthday, she was high on meth and ran into his home with her car, which she denies because she says that she doesn't remember that, so. So that story could be completely made up, I don't know. They broke up after these allegations came out about David Dobrik and the vlog squad. HelloFresh, Dollar Shave Club, DoorDash, General Mills, HBO Max, Facebook, EA Sports, and Audible no longer intended to work with David Dobrik, including one of his biggest ones, SeatGeek, which recently just actually started working with him again. This all followed after an insider report was done. This journalist did a deep dive into all of the allegations, everything that had happened, and it was not a good look for David at all. And all the people that were on his side and supporting him. So March 21st, 2021, Jeff Wittick decides to make a video. He titles it My Truth. Mm, so original. Attempting to distance himself from the insider report. Cause that shit was very informative and very much so a very big deal. In the video, he denies buying alcohol for the underage victims and shares an audio of a phone call with insider report Kat Tenbarge, during which he attempts to clear his name. Wittick claims that Paytas is the only one who remembers him buying the alcohol, but according to the insider report, the victim's friend and designated driver recalls Wittick and another vlog squad member, Todd Smith, returning to the party with whiskey. Also, March 21st, 2021, Ethan Klein, not pictured, and Trisha Paytas host an emergency live stream of Frenemies in which they interview Jeff Wittick, who we never thought that we would see on the Frenemies podcast. It actually comes to light that Wittick hadn't actually read the Insider article because he didn't want to pay for the paywall on it. I don't know. I, I don't know this stuff. Well, you act like I'm with David every day. Well, I, it's in I, the I, article I, if you would have fucking read the article. <laughs> okay. Ethan. On the Frenemies podcast, Trisha Paytas also mentions that something had happened to Jeff, a certain accident, something had happened with his eye. You also told me you distanced yourself from like David and them. You're not really like in the vlog squad anymore. Well, I've been, I, I was in, in a bad accident, so I've been recovering. Was that in Utah? And stuff like that. Your eye was in Utah? So, yeah, I don't, I, I don't really want to get into but that. But it was but a David bit, right? It was for a vlog? I don't, no, I don't want to get into any of that stuff. <laughs> Okay. And Jeff has been walking around with his eye bandaged up and kind of making jokes about it and not really acting like his usual self. And Trisha suggests that something had happened to him. Jeff doesn't want to talk about it. Jeff is pretty unwilling to speak about it. At one point, Trisha even mentions that he was in a crane accident. Trisha is not a big fan of Jeff Wittick for multiple reasons. Trisha kind of has beef with a lot of the people that are in the vlog squad because they treated her pretty poorly after her breakup with Jason Nash. Trisha Paytas and Ethan Klein on Frenemies did an LA tour and she points out the Starbucks in which Jeff Wittick ignores her at. There's the Starbucks where Jeff Wittick blew me off. That one right there. He left his order yeah. on the counter yeah. and left the Starbucks. And that's when the famous beef started, you guys. Jeff says it's because he doesn't respect her and, you know, he wants to stand by his friends. And Trisha drags him on YouTube and on Instagram stories and said that once David is done with him, that Jeff too will be irrelevant. <laughs> happy someone i'm so happy someone made a fucking video about this that shit you are lucky you are fucking lucky you're like suck suck that teach i suck it so dry. so i unfortunately also have another confession i used to watch a lot of zane and heath oh my god they're not any oh hi this is zane i am not proud of this but my senior year of high school i was really in love with heath hussar like a lot i really did there was something about his unhealthy estate where he was smoking like two packs of cigarettes a day and on a lot of blow 
and um, just really not doing very well for himself and like he didn't seem happy. There was just something so appealing about it. I don't want to get into it. I don't understand the logic behind it. I don't know what to say and I don't want to talk about it. And please don't ask my friends about it. And I just wish that we could leave this in the past. I don't know why you guys keep bringing it up. And it's like really embarrassing. And it's like a sensitive topic for me. And I didn't ever want to reveal it. Alas, Heath Hussar and Zayn Hijazi, who are in the vlog squad, also have their own podcast called Zayn and Heath Unfiltered. Ugh, personally me, I stopped watching. I really like the podcast. Podcast, okay, Mariah and I are from the same exact hometown. I thought Matt King was pretty funny and cute. Zane and Heath had like pretty funny stories. And then the pandemic happened and then they started being like kind of uh, far right leaning and talking about conspiracy theories and were suddenly very anti-vax and then didn't get vaccinated to go to their best friend Aaron Gilfoy's wedding anyway. Also wasn't aware that they were like huge Trumpies anyway. From that point on, I have not watched the podcast. However, on the Unfiltered podcast, Heath Hussar and Zayn mention that they were on a trip to Utah with David Dobrik and the vlog squad, all of them, and that Heath and Todd and Jeff got injured. And it was mentioned that Heath broke his shoulder and didn't realize how bad it was at the time. But Heath said that he didn't want to talk about it too much. He didn't know how much he was allowed to say and that he would find out soon. But it seemed like it was very quickly brushed off and like not that big of a deal. April 22nd, 2021, after months of dodging the rumors, Jeff Wittick uploads a multi-part documentary, Don't Try This At Home, which I did watch with my mom. So when I was explaining to my mom on the phone these past few days, like what video I'm about to film, I'm like, do you remember David Dobrik? She's like, oh, Dobrik, Slovakia? And I'm like, yes, mom, David Dobrik from Slovakia. She goes, yes. And I'm like, do you remember how he almost killed his friend? And she goes, uh, the pretty one, right? And I'm like, yes. And then I explained to her like what I'm doing and what I'm explaining. And then she lost interest. But anyway, I remember watching this whole documentary at home with my mom. He talks about an accident that he suffered last year in 2020 in which he broke parts of his face and skull and required him to have extensive surgeries, not just one, but multiple surgeries. David Dobrik was planning a comeback vlog in June, 2020. So in this time, what a lot of us didn't know is that Casey Neistat, the very popular vlogger, actually was creating a documentary about David Dobrik. The documentary was called Under the Influence and it was premiered at South by Southwest, but unfortunately the public has not seen it because it hasn't been posted anywhere and it was only really shown there. And Casey Neistat and David Dobrik are not on speaking terms anymore because the original documentary was supposed to showcase David Dobrik and his influence that he had on YouTube and he was very fascinated by his work and his influence with the vlog squad. No one knew was that this horrific, tragic accident was about to happen to Jeff Wittick. And Casey Neistat is a good storyteller. And I would like to think that he's an honest storyteller from his previous work. And he wasn't going to leave that out. And so he included all of the accident and everything that had happened. So Casey and David are no longer on speaking terms. Additionally, at this time, David Dobrik was pitching a show to Netflix, kind of doing interviews with celebrities, but only showing the really good parts. And Netflix didn't want to pick this up because they said they could not see that a YouTuber could have that kind of potential onto something like Netflix. So David knew that when he came back onto YouTube, he was going to have to bring it back hard. He was gonna have to bring it back big and he was gonna have to do something interesting. It couldn't be like his normal vlogs of them going out because they also couldn't because it was the pandemic. Even though they went to Saddle Ranch like every single night at the peak of the pandemic. So anyway, David took the vlog squad to Utah in which they were going to be skydiving and motorbiking and whatever the fuck. Just really violent, crazy boy things. David Dobrik was operating an excavator machine as shown, in which he was operating in a shallow lake where he was taking his friends wakeboarding. At one point, Kerna Kampf is swinging from the line. As it starts to get like pretty dangerous and she starts falling, she says to stop and that he takes things too far. Jeff gets on, David Dobrik is still in control of the excavator doesn't have a license for this thing, by the way. David Dobrik swings him even higher at approximately 60 miles per hour and then abruptly stops, causing Wittick to crash into the machine made out of metal, duh. And then falling from the excavator into the water with his foot still hanging onto the line. Jeff Wittick says, this is where I made a mistake. I forgot the biggest fucking idiot I know was driving it. In this documentary, you can see multiple times that he is trying to be a good sport about the situation and 
forgive David Dobrik for what he did. He's oftentimes showing kind of like covering for him and keeps reiterating that he made a mistake. And, you know, David Dobrik didn't know that he was, David Dobrik didn't know that he was gonna hurt his friend. And honestly, personally me, as someone who's never been in the situation like this where someone has injured me greatly, I don't know how I would react to that kind of situation, especially when you're like friends with someone. But it was kind of, off-putting the way that he just kept feeling like it, he was covering for David essentially the whole time. But as stated in the documentary, they stayed friends. Things are cool between them. David is paying for his medical bills and Jeff is continuing to get more and more surgeries and seeing a neurologist and it it's a lot. Essentially, he has permanent brain damage, almost lost his eyesight, but additionally, like, was extremely close to dying. His whole skull literally broke open. This is something that is going to affect Jeff's health for the rest of his life. February 28th, 2022, David Dobrik is back to posting his little videos on the internet, back to vlogging. And who is absent from David's videos? Jeff Wittek. Jeff Wittek makes a Patreon live stream in which he is on a lot of drugs, you know, because he just had surgery. And he reveals that he hasn't received a text or anything from David Dobrik since the most recent corrective eye surgery. Then Jeff Wittick releases an episode of his podcast titled Dear David, in which he wanted to get through some points about the crane accident. In which he says, I've been protecting this guy for so long and there's so much to the story than him just not texting me for a week after I had such a drastic surgery where I could have been blind. Jeff also referenced the documentary he released after the aftermath, Don't Try This At Home, saying we sugarcoated it. He's a scumbag friend, a fake friend. Now the documentary is over. He doesn't give a fuck, doesn't text me, doesn't check in, he claims in the episode. The other reason him saying now, flipping the script saying, oh, it was fucking Jeff's idea, he's crazy. Complete bullshit. David Dobrik tried to spin it on his podcast episode with Jason Nash, views. Apparently when Jeff was still in the hospital directly after the accident, David was the only one allowed in the room because of COVID. And apparently Kourtney Kardashian of all people called David Dobrik or he called Kourtney Kardashian and David pans over to Jeff and he says, look what this guy did to himself. Insinuating that Jeff basically caused his accident by himself and that David didn't have a lot to take blame. Jeff comes out and says that David Dobrik has actually not paid any of his medical bills as promised and that he's now in an infraction on his debt. Apparently the person who is supposed to be handling a lot of this medical bill stuff was Natalie Marizuena, who is David Dobrik's childhood friend from high school. And additionally, is that childhood friend? Is that a childhood friend if you're in high school? And then became his assistant in Los Angeles. And now she is the president of David Dobrik LLC. Also important to note that she was dating Toddy Smith, once again, friends with Jeff Wittick, and there's some pretty recent and new information about Natalie and Jeff that is pretty fucked up. The Views podcast with Jason Nash and David Obrick, which honestly, towards the end, was a very shitty podcast. <laughs> it was like 30 minutes long. They never knew what to talk about. You could tell David did not want to be there. Anyway, March 2022, David stresses about how it's been the worst two years of his life, and laughs about being canceled. He claims that the Jeff thing is the fucking worst. That day is the worst thing that ever happened to me. David says, I think one of the main reasons Jeff is bummed with me right now is because he saw me do an interview that I said something I promised I'd keep between us. Referencing that the stunt supposedly was Wittick's idea. He says, I feel like I can take 80% of the responsibility, 90%, 100% of the responsibility for the accident, whatever he needs me to do. But it gets to a point where it starts to feel like I was taking 150% of the responsibility. As for the medical bills, Dobrik claims to have covered like 78,000 of surgery, but it's a two-way street he adds we can be like when's your next surgery but also no one's looping us in what we need to be paying for jeff claims that david stuck him with a lousy insurance company added that he had to convince david to pay for half of a stem cell procedure and although jeff has gone through multiple successful surgeries jeff has noted that he's going to have lifelong brain injuries as a result of the stunt. Now, Jeff is actually suing David for general negligence and intentional tort in a new lawsuit obtained by multiple outlets. He's seeking over $10 million in damages, claiming that he's lost wages and earning capacity and has accumulated numerous large hospital bills. And also his credit is bad. Like the most important thing, obviously your credit. Jeff reportedly claims in legal filings that when he was hanging onto the rope, David swung the machine at unsafe speeds before abruptly slowing it down, causing Jeff to slam into the side of the excavator with high force and suffer a myriad of injuries. For a while, especially in the documentary, they were running this whole thing that the excavator, if it goes at too fast of a speed, it just suddenly shuts off, which apparently Jeff has said in a podcast episode recently that that was a cover up for David and that they both were going to like come to that conclusion, both say that, that it was f at fault of the excavator for suddenly stopping. Apparently, 
that's not the case. And David really did stop the excavator while it was at a high speed. Like I said, Natalie isn't really innocent in this situation either. And it's also seen that in the situation with the dirty Dom and the situation with him assaulting a bunch of girls, Natalie Marduena did not have the nicest things to say about these victims. It was very sad and it was awful to see because I was watching her for so many years and I was a fan of hers and to see how she was talking about victims awful. Jeff recently posted these screenshots of things that Natalie had said to one of his friends who's editing his video. Hi, I just saw Jeff's tweet. Don't want to bother him, but how did the edit turn out? This was at the time of the editing process for Jeff's documentary. Good, we cut out the screenshots and changed some verbiage. He's in bad shape today though. Okay, cool. Did you guys add the teaser stuff for the positive note at end? So that was um, Natalie's reaction to his friend saying that he's in bad shape. Okay, cool. <laughs> Oh my God, sorry, I forgot my tongs. <laughs> you maybe ask yourself, what the hell is Tana doing up on here? For about the last year, Tana and Jeff have actually been working a lot together. Tana has been a frequent guest on Jeff FM, Jeff's podcast. And they were even in talks about starting their own podcast called Friends with Benefits until Tana decided to focus on her own podcast with her friend Brooke called Cancelled. Tana and Jeff teased a lot that they were dating, a lot, and a lot of people shipped them together. I gotta be honest, I don't consume a lot of Jeff content nowadays, and I really don't consume any Tana content. Do I hope that they both end up really happy and married together and have like a billion kids and they live happily ever after and like both go to a lot of extensive therapy? Yes. I really, really want that for them. Anyway, ultimately, they, it seems like they're actually very good friends to one another, truly, and value each other, so good for them. Tana was trying for a long time to maintain her friendship between Jeff Wittick and David. Tana even lived in David's old house at the time. Ultimately, this turned out to be pretty hurtful to Jeff obviously, because Tana would go to events and hang out with him and hang out with the vlog squad. and even went to his pizza company, Dobrik's grand opening. And that really was painful to Jeff. Tana said that she went to an event in which members from the vlog squad were saying, I miss Jeff. However, we're making zero effort to actually check up on him when he actually really needed people surrounding him because he was not doing well mentally um, or physically, like literally just not doing well. Tana also revealed that Toddy Smith, who is dating Natalie, had actually yelled at Tana Mojo that there's two sides to every story and was actually very aggressive and scary towards Tana. Tana then decided after hearing Jeff talk about this that she wants to be loyal to Jeff and has excommunicated herself from David Dobrik. Okay, let's get into the eyeball drama. <laughs> there seems to be some weirdness with David Dobrik and eyeballs, okay? David Dobrik got a sculpture of a ginormous eye in his house, okay? It just seemed like kind of awkward and kind of random, you know, especially after something as traumatic as like literally almost beating your friend's eyeball out of their skull. David Dobrik also had a thumbnail on his channel called What is Happening to My Eye. Jeff had also posted a photo of himself after surgery and about an hour later, Todd Zane and David posted a photo on Instagram with the caption, we don't give a fuck. All of these things may be mere coincidences, but Jeff does not really see these as coincidences and is quite hurt by them. And most recently, as of a few weeks ago, Trisha, Jeff, and Tana all sat together and made a podcast episode together, which is just crazy because I never thought that Jeff Wittick and Trisha Paytas would ever get along ever. Nonetheless, we're speaking very kindly and highly of one another. I didn't know Tana and Trisha were really that close until Tana was on Trisha's podcast, but they do have a form of alliance. At the time when Trisha Paytas was dating Jason Nash, there was this sick and awful skit that David Dobrik kept trying to convince Jason to do, which he kept trying to lure Trisha into doing, which was David repeatedly trying to set up a threesome for Trisha, Tana, and Jason, which Trisha says that she was extremely uncomfortable why and did not want to do it um, and didn't like these jokes being made about that. Tana was 19 at the time and says that she is now in therapy because of the situation. On this recent podcast episode, a lot of it was Jeff talking about how he is planning on doing this lawsuit, but a lot of things he has to keep private, especially some things about Natalie and David, but that a lot is gonna come forth when the trial happens in summer of 2024, which is a bit of time away. David also tried to get the lawsuit excused um, by one time saying that Jeff was trying to do it for clout, and then another time saying that David was his employer, and so Jeff could not 
sue him which should be even more reason that you can sue him but david made it very clear all the time that these people do not work for david that this is just for their own personal gain and exposure to be in his vlogs and also in this podcast jeff thanked trisha a lot for bringing up what happened to him because he was too scared to say what actually happened to him and was covering up for david but trisha did not fear that <laughs> and she was saying that you know it wasn't really her place and you know she did a little bit too much and went out of her way to you know tell his story but he ultimately says that he's grateful for it and um he's happy that she did that because it needed to be done jeff claims that so much more will be brought to light as time goes on um and trisha agrees where the hell is everyone now <laughs> oh my god i literally forgot about this man i specifically traveled to a different i traveled to a different walgreens to get this photo and i didn't even mention this man I hate him. <laughs> His name is Nick Antonian. They called him Jonah because they said that he looked like Jonah Hill. Nick was actually very good friends with Jeff. He was on Jeff's barber shop. They were neighbors. They were very good friends at one point until Nick quite literally dropped Jeff because David told him to. David was like, you really shouldn't be friends with Jeff anymore. And so they're not friends anymore. And that hurts Jeff a lot. And in a recent podcast interview, Nick actually says that it was not fate that he just randomly stumbled into the vlog squad videos, that it was not by chance at all, and that he had actually stalked David Dobrik and sought him out and kept going to events in which he knew David was going to be in and even waited outside of his apartment and rode in the elevator with David in an attempt to try to form a connection. Anyway, very creepy. Jeff's better off without him in his life. And now I have this fucking picture of him. So what the hell is everyone up to now? <laughs> loser, loser, loser. I'm just kidding. Natalie Marijuana, still the president of David Dobrik LLC. She's influencing and posting a shit ton on Snapchat because you can get paid a lot of money to post on Snapchat now. Speaking of which, David Dobrik is now like a full-time Snapchatter and he has a pizza company named Dobrik's. Nick Antonian, his family owns a restaurant in LA. I'm not sure other than that, other than stalking his next victim. Dom, irrelevant, stupid. Uh, pretends to be like an Amazon worker and makes TikToks. Anyway. What's up guys, this is Dom, the Amazon package thief. Jeff, thriving in a certain sense. I believe that he's gonna get justice. I really, really wanna see him win the lawsuit next year. It seems like he's surrounding himself with really good people, making good content. His podcast is an absolute success and I'm very happy for him. Hadi and Natalie no longer together. Zayn Hijazi still doing the unfiltered podcast, but they lost a patron subscriber, me. Aaron and Carly are pretty disconnected from all the drama because I don't think they're very close with anyone in the vlog squad anymore because of the whole anti-vax thing. They're pretty disconnected, live a pretty quiet life, do their podcast, and it looks like they're very happy with one another. Natalie also said in the Casey Neistat video that Jeff swung off of the excavator to impress Natalie because he was in love with her. <gasps> Isn't that fucked up? Isn't that so fucked up? Anyway, Scotty Sire, after Scotty made his video trying to defend David Dobrik, was like, anyone who knows David Dobrik knows that he's like such a sweet guy. Like he doesn't get mad at you. Like he just gets like disappointed in you, you know? Jason Nash, he remarried. I hope he's a lot better to his current wife than he was to Trisha. I remember watching vlogs where he was like shaming her for the amount of food that she was eating. It was very uncomfortable to watch. Tana seems to be doing great with her podcast. Still in scandals, not surprised. Trisha is Trisha. She just dressed up as Ice Spice the other day. So I think she's doing well. And the excavator, I, I don't know what happened to the excavator. I'm just a girl, little old me, just trying to explain to you some lore that you may or may not know. <laughs> I'm just a girl, little old me, just trying to explain to you some lore that you may or may not know. Also, leave a comment on any lore that I may have missed out on, because I know for a fact I have definitely missed out on something, because the possibility of trying to fit everything into an hour-long video is impossible. Make sure that you subscribe if you want to be nasty. If you're not, you're disgusting. Also, make sure you have your bell notifications on so you know every single time I post, or else you are gross. If you want to follow me on my other social media, Instagram, Twitter, Deepop, Spotify, it's just at Nicole Raffi. And if you want to follow me on my TikTok, it's at Nikki Nasty. Uh, I'm going to go now. And even though it's nighttime, scatter these photos around Philadelphia because I cannot keep storing photos of influencers underneath my bed. This one I might keep though. Bye.